and even the streaks of light. This guy was doing his experiments, sometimes he photographs with streaks of light, thinking, ah, this must be something magic. They found it was like, like hairs, sometimes like spider webs, which were floating down in many places there. Uh, and he actually just got these little hairs and took photographs of them, identical to sometimes what you see in his photographs. So it's very, very clear that these things are natural phenomena. However, people still, no, 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 these are devas. You know why? It's because it was caught on their film. <laughs> or it was around them, or sometimes around you know, their favorite monk or favorite nun. And this is why sometimes the power of belief is just terrible like that. There's you know, my teacher, Ajahn Chah, the great Ajahn Chah, there's sometimes that people just wanted some sort of magic from the teacher so much because they were disciples of Ajahn Chah. And sometimes if they were disciples of one of the other monks, oh, the other monks, did you see them? They were actually levitating. There's a story of one of these monks, Ajahn Wen, that he became famous because the jet fighter pilot in the Thai Air Force saw him at 30,000 feet sitting on a cloud. <laughs> now, if that happens to their disciple, you think, Ajahn Shah, what has he done? I wish he could be seen up there because I'm his disciple. It gives me sort of more credibility. So actually what happened with Ajahn Chah on this one, and this is a very typical example, the one day that it was the, the day he was giving a talk on the in Sri Lanka Poya days, Taiwan Pra, the Sabbath days, early times of his monastery, it was during the range retreat, the Wasa, when the monsoon was coming down, and a devoted disciple was driving in their car to listen to the talk. And as they got into the monastery, because of the heavy rain, because it was a dirt road, they got bogged in the mud. Not wondering, not knowing what to do next. Now through the rain, through the window of their car, in the pouring rain, they saw this monk come out from the forest. And they looked at him, it was Ajahn Chah. And Ajahn Chah himself pushed their car out of the mud. Now that's a humble monk, who doesn't mind getting wet who can actually help other people. doesn't matter if you're a big monk or a big abbot, and you can push the car and get mud and wet and soaked. And that's what a real monk is. They were very, very impressed by the real compassion of a monk. So they didn't need to get wet. But then it was only about a couple of hundred meters to the hall where they were getting to give the talk. And there they saw Ajahn Chah sitting there, completely dry, not a speck of mud on him. And they thought, wow, Ajahn Chah has left his body, or made a double body, like in the Matrix, <laughs> and actually pushed our car out, out of compassion. Not only is it compassion, this guy's got psychic powers, we've seen it, hooray! And that story went around, it still goes around to this day, even though the one who pushed the car is Ajahn Paitun, he actually came here a few years ago, Ajahn Chah's cousin, who has looks alike, <laughs> he was a novice at the time, he said, no, it wasn't Ajahn, it was me. But no matter how many times he says that, people still will not believe. <laughs> they say, no, it was Ajahn Chah's psychic power, because they wanted to believe so much. Now this is the problem with criticism. Doesn't matter how many times people criticize us, if we want to carry that hemp, it doesn't matter if we see gold there, we will not throw away that hemp to carry up the gold, which is far more valuable and worthwhile, simply because of what we want to believe. And why did they, would they want to believe that? Because they were a disciple of that monk. It was their ego. They had a vested interest, their pride, in believing their teacher had psychic powers.